I'm at Beijing's drum tower, which is closed along with the uh, bell tower for renovation till October. You'd think uh, they would uh, do this in the winter when it's not high tourist season. Whatever. We're on the central axis of uh, the ancient city. Disappointing. The bell tower is just north. And we're at the drum tower now. It's a short walk from my hostel. Construction of Beijing's drum tower began during the ninth year of Emperor Yuan of the Yuan Dynasty, 1272. The tower was originally called Qijiang Tower which means coming from the seven ancient celestial bodies of gold, wood, water, fire, the earth, sun, and moon. However, shortly after construction was completed, it was destroyed by fire. Then in the first year of Dade, under the reign of Emperor Chengjong, 1297 of the Yuan Dynasty, the tower was rebuilt. The tower as it exists today is located at the north end of the north-south central axis of the old capital, Beijing. It was a result of rebuilding effort in the 18th year of the Yangol during Ming Dynasty 1420. Drum tower is 46.7 meters in height with triple eaves and a hip and gable roof. It was a primarily wooden structure covered with round gray tiles and green glazed trim at the top. There used to be 25 watchman's drums, one main drum representing one whole year and 24 mass drums representing the 24 solar terms. Main drum is the big one, and then the 24 is the smaller one. On the second floor of the drum tower, there's only one remaining now. The bell and drum towers together made up the time announcing center of the capital during Yuan, Ming, and Qing dynasties in the 13th year of the Republic of China, 1924. The first, the uh, time announcing function was finally put to rest in 1957. The Beijing People's Committee announced that the drum tower would become a protection site at municipal level. And in 1996, the drum tower is brought under national protection by the State Council of the People's Republic of China. Here's their uh, sign in the bricked up ticket window that they'll be closed for the entire tour season. That's closed too, according to the sign, the uh, bell tower. Oh, that's annoying to have the first thing I go to closed. Gotten quite annoyed with my visit to uh, China this time around. Started off on the wrong foot. I guess I'll go up to the Prince Chun mansion. Mansion of Prince Gong. Maybe I can go up here to the uh, tower. There's a tower here. See if that's open. Then walk down Huahai. I, uh, I had a friend who was oh so helpful and said, oh, you should get a data package uh, for your uh, phone. So she puts in the Chinese texting. There's no way to get English texting from the uh, China Mobile. Everything's texted to you in Chinese. You can get a live person on the helpline, but they can't do anything for you. You have to go into a store where no one speaks English. So I found out when I put a hundred yuan credit on my phone after getting to the airport and I had to call my hostel because they were an hour late picking me up. They still charged me 20 yuan. If I knew they were going to do that, I would have just uh, taken the uh, train with 25 yuan and not waited an hour like a dickhead and wasted a hundred yuan in a phone call. So I put that credit on. I was able to make one phone call before it cut out. So then uh, I go to a store and call the f 
China mobile line. And after finally getting an English speaking person, she's like, oh yeah, we charged you for like all the months that you, since you didn't use your phone. And I'm like, what? I wasn't even in the country. And she's like, well, you have to go to a store and they take your passport down and we would only charge you five UN and hold, you'd hold your phone number. And then you could get it back when you came back to the country. And I'm like, I did that and they didn't fucking speak English, you know? I thought they did it and they didn't fucking do it, you know? And um, so then I dumped another hundred UN and was able to make a few phone calls and it cut out again. Now it wants another hundred UN and supposedly I'll be good for a month. But it won't matter anyway because at the end of the month, I'll go to a store to try to tell them I'm leaving and they'll take my information down and they won't fucking do it right and I'll be charged every month until I come back to China again. I might as well ditch the card and get a new one and sign up for a plan and then just ditch it at the end. It's like quite annoying. My friend, who was also oh helpful to sign up, didn't bother to tell me that I had to do that, but I was smart enough to figure out on my own I probably should cancel this. And uh, still didn't happen correctly. And then China Mobile has your passport number and all that shit, so it's better just buy a SIM card. When you go to a store anyway, they like want to sell you a SIM card out of their back pocket. You ask for a SIM card, they pull it out of their back pocket instead of like getting it from a drawer or something. It's like, yeah, this seems kind of shady to me. <laughs> That's what they all do. They refuse to like give you a new SIM card, basically. It's like obviously been recycled. They literally pull it out of their pocket. But if I'm gonna get charged all that money anyway, I should just say fuck it, get a new number every time. I got a VPN on my phone now so I can use Google Maps on the go, even with the China Mobile, to navigate around since there's no English version of Baidu to try to get bus schedules or things like that or search the internet. The only alternative is using Bing, which is horrible. So now I'm walking on, I think, West uh, Guruxi. I'll come up to Kuang Kwa Temple, I guess. Let me cut down this side alley. And then I had a friend, I was supposed to meet the first night, but I was just too tired, so she finally came over last night. And then by the time of like giving her directions to my hostel, all that, she like gets there, we go to dinner, I'd already eaten, I didn't really want to go to dinner, you know. She actually was nice enough to pay for herself this time. <sighs> we hung out last time, I was like, I had to pay for everything. And, uh... So I ended up having like a second dinner that I really didn't want to and she's like showing me pictures and stuff but I'm like let's go you know and like honestly I wasn't really looking forward to having sex because it wasn't that great the first time so we have sex a second time and then she wants to stay the whole night and it's like ugh just go home tiny little bed Yer Hutong was called the Guang Hua Si Street according to Hutong collect of the five districts in Beijing and the Ming Dynasty during the Chain Long period of the Qing Dynasty, it was renamed Yair Hutong according to the Chain Long period complete map of Beijing in the late Qing Dynasty. Part of Hutong was occupied due to the extension of Prince Chun's mansion. Its name was also changed to Yair Hutong. I mean, they're nice people. I like being sociable and hanging out, but not at $30 a night. Then the hostel's like right on top of you as soon as anybody comes in with you. Even to visit your room, they have to like register. So then she registers and they like come knocking on the door at like 10 at night and they're like, 
uh, if you're going to stay overnight, you have to register again. She's like, what? And like, I have a double room anyway with two beds. I paid for it. So that's not the issue. Usually if you have one bed, they want to charge you extra for two people staying there for the night if you have a guest. That's pretty normal with hostels, actually. Anyway, but then my whole night's thrown off. It was like 2 a.m. before I could get to sleep. You know, she finally did leave at like 11.30. So you shower, get some work done. And it's like going on 1.32 in the morning before I can finally go to sleep. Then I gotta get up at like 6, you know? Not worth it. It would be if the person like worked out and took care of their body. But... And you end up hooking up with someone who it's like, well... Honestly, not that good, not really worth it. You put it when you put everything add everything up, you know, the bad night's sleep, bad mood, wake up you know, shouldn't wake up in a bad mood the next day. After you get lucky, you should feel good about it. I just feel pissed off and angry. <laughs> it's the opposite. Check out this, uh, check out this temple.